Shall we bow almighty, gracious, and forgiving fathers once again that we approach thee in prayer, just thanking thee for thy many blessings. Father, we thank you for this worship service that we are having, and we, we ask, Father, that we do it in a manner that will be pleasing and acceptable in your eyesight. We pray for this young man, Brother Carter, that will be coming, bringing a message, Father. And we ask, Father, that you open his mind and reacquaint him with the things that he has studied over time, Father, that he may impart unto us the mystery of the gospel. And if there is anyone in the audience that is not familiar, does not know the parting of their sins with Jesus Christ, we ask, Father, that they, that they come down and say, men and brethren, what must I do to be saved? Now bless us, watch over us, be with us throughout the remainder of our service. Bless our congregation, bless our sisters, our brothers, our young people, our elders, and our minister. Watch over us, save us in the end, in Jesus Christ's name. We hopefully pray and we say amen. There is beyond the azure blue A God concealed from human sight Eating disguised with heavenly hue And framed the worlds with his breath Don't you know there is a God? He is alive and him we live and we survive. Well, from the God created man, he is our God, the great I am. There was a long, long time ago. The prophets heard He is the God that we should know Who speaks from this inspired word Don't you know There is a God, He is a 
alive and in him we live and we survive well from dust our God he, he created man he is a His light from mortal mind. God holds that germ within his hand. And though men may search, they cannot find. For God alone does understand. I'm so glad that he Good morning. The scripture that I will read for you will be Psalms 100, verses 1 through 5. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter the gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. But faithfulness continues through all generations. I've just read for you Psalms 100 verses 1 through 5. Thank you.
welcome and it's a blessing to join you amongst the digital dimension uh, in this cyber sanctuary and through the means of media. I appreciate uh, Dr. Harrison for inviting me uh, to share a word with you, Chad, and my family, and to mutually share a word from the Lord together in this worship experience. If you will, turn with me to the book of Psalm, chapter number 100. Now I'll be reading from verse number 1 through 5. I have a propensity to read from the NIV, so hear these words as you open your Bibles to this very familiar passage. To all our guests joining us today, we just give you thanks uh, for joining us, for you could have been with any other church through the digital dimensions today, and we thank God for you joining us uh, at Chatham. The text for consideration this morning says this from Psalm chapter number 100, verses 1 through 5. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs, and know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. Get this, his faithfulness continues through all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. The people of God said thanks be to God. I want to speak to you from the subject this morning and share with you on this subject something to shout about, something to shout about. If you're right there next to someone in your living room on the way somewhere to run errands, if you're tuning in by yourself, I want you to just shout to the atmosphere and nudge someone next to you. There's something that you can shout about. There's something that you can shout about. During these times of COVID-19, I believe it is very important to talk about the necessity of worship. Yes, it is so necessitated that we talk about this because many times uh, being going throughout the week of COVID-19 and the, the season that we are in, sometimes we can lose track of how worship is so important and vital to our lives. And true, we cannot come into the house of God right now, but we can also bring the house of God to our worship environment at home. I believe worship is so important, and so that's why God has ordained it and commanded so. And so we have to talk about the importance of worship. You would all know that any time you start a new job, it begins with an orientation. It is there when you arrive in the HR office that you begin to finalize any paperwork that needs to be done. And then you go through new employee orientation, going through the ins and outs of what it means to work in this new space, in this new place, and how uh, the people there have worked there historically. They continue, when you get to the job, to, to explain how it works while introducing you to the key people. They explain procedures and give you a sense of how it is you can be successful in your somewhat new environment. They want to make sure you have been fully oriented to what is expected of you in this new workspace. And in the same way, Psalm 100 is the handbook for what worship is all about. It is as though that the psalmist wants us to get a sense of what it means to truly worship God. Matter of fact, you can't really read Psalm 100 in a bubble. You have to consider Psalm 95 through 99 to get the overarching theme because it is in these psalms that are called the enthronement psalms because the theme of those psalms are all about the fact that Jesus, the Lord, God, the Messiah is king. It's as though now that they've lifted up the Lord and they've recognized him as being king. And then you get to Psalm 100, and Psalm 100 now begins to point us into what worship ought to look like. And I want to lift up a few principles out of today's passage to help us understand what it means to worship God. Not only that, but how we're to worship God. The first principle is this, beloved. We ought to worship God joyfully. Yes, look at verse Number one through two, you see this in the opening verses. It reads this way, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. 
I want you to imagine as the people are coming up uh, to the house of God to worship God, there is an official at the door, and this official at the outer gate begins to say these words to them, shout for joy to the Lord, worship the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs. I want you to imagine as the worshipers are walking towards the house of God, they have scrolls in their hands, and in these scrolls are encased the lyrics of their joyful songs written and prepared to be rendered to God in praise. It is as though the officials at the outer gate are encouraging the people even before the songs are being rendered in their hearing. The spirit that they have is contagious, is effervescent, is bubbly, it's vibrant, because the psalmist reminds us that when you come into worship, it's not like going to the mall. It's not like going online shopping. It's not like you're looking and browsing for what you want or what your preference is. That no, when you come to worship, it's all about being in the very spirit of God. It's not about your preference. It's about the power of God. And it's the imperative that we know that worship is about God and not us. It's about who God is and what God says about who he is. So the psalmist declares then, when you enter in, the text says you ought to shout for joy. And you may be looking at the screen right now and saying, how do I find joy in this COVID-19 situation? How do I invite joy within my own uh, household? Well, God says, whether, wherever two or three are gathered in his name, there the spirit of the Lord is. And so if two or three are gathered in his name, then you can invite joy in your house. Uh, you ought to shout for joy to the Lord and understand that joy is not simply a smile on your face, but joy is that when you come to worship with your heart, you reflect on what God has done. The original word here in the Hebrew is shimha. The church say shimha. Yes, shimha. This can be translated as joy, uh, gladness, happiness, or someone who is rejoicing. It can be expressed in a plethora of ways, but above all, it is a matter of the heart. It is the outward expression of the joy and gladness inside of you. And so we should come in filled with joy. It's a reminder that when you come to worship, worship is not about the praise team having to pump you up. The joy already inside of you, matched with the praise on the outside, should cause an overflow of praise in your heart. Because worship is about waking up with joy and walking through the door of your worship space with joy. It's about you leaving with joy. See, we can't give you joy, nor can someone else worship God for you because they don't know entirely what God has done for you. Because only God knows and what you know about what God has done for you is about what God has done just for you. Yeah, only you can worship God for yourself. And your worship ought to be baptized in the joy of the Lord. It was not too long ago, beloved, that I was in Dallas, Texas. One of my favorite popular restaurants named Papa Do's. Now, you must know if you've never been to Papa Do's in the south or even in the north, that this is one of the greatest seafood cuisines this side of heaven. And this is... This is one of the favorite restaurants, and I stopped by there particularly because I had a function at the house before graduation, and I had a to-go order. And I was making my way to the booth to get my to-go order, and I was just about ready. But I noticed something when I was getting out of my car on that evening. I noticed that people were getting out of their cars looking happy. I noticed that people were waiting at their tables looking happy. I noticed when there were other people who had eaten and they looked happy too. And I noticed somebody else who was enjoying their food and they looked happy. And I began to realize the reason why everybody looked so happy was that it was happy hour. It was, it was happy hour. And there was something about this, this, this moment that gave them a sense of joy in this experience. And sometimes I wish the church had, had a happy hour. I mean, if they could get happy about a liquid, surely we can get happy about the Lord. Surely if, if we have uh, what God has done for us in our memory and in our experience, surely we can make sure that our joy is not based upon our circumstances. I mean, who, need a, who needs a margarita when you've got the Messiah? I mean, who needs a daiquiri when you've been delivered? I mean, who needs a Heineken when you've got the Heavenly Father and you ought to have a happiness in your soul because you remember and you reflect on what God has done for you. You ought to have a joy because you remember how God 
has brought you throughout the years. A song said, down through the years, the Lord has been good to me. And every single time you wake up and reflect on how far God has brought you, and you reflect on how good God has been to you, you can't hold the joy inside of you. Because only you know that God has been good to you. And good will have the final word over your life. And see, your worship can't entirely be based upon who's preaching and what song they're singing and who showed up in your house for church and, and, and if your outfit was cute or not. No, your joy uh, is based in God because God kept you and God sustained you. God has been strengthening you and God has been with you. And so the psalmist says, you ought to make a joyful noise. And I love the text because the text says you ought to shout for joy. Yeah, some people don't like loud sounds, but, but I, I believe in this text, it shows us that there is some value in volume. Yeah. When we talk about how God has given us joy, we ought to show that we have joy. I was at a facility once, and it had a sign outside the building. The sign said, no shirt, no shoes, you already know it, beloved, no service. And I wish we had a sign outside the church and outside our spaces of worship that said, no shout, no song, no service. Listen, if you can't bring it in with you, we can't give it to you. You got to know that God is worthy of being praised, even through COVID-19 and even through the tension that we've been facing in this season. One Old Testament writer says it this way, the joy of the Lord is your strength. When you can't find strength in any other person, any other item or any other asset, you have to understand that joy that comes from the Lord is your strength. And so you have to make sure you're girded with the strength and the joy of the Lord. I've got to worship God joyfully, but it doesn't stop there. He says, you got to worship God reverently. Look at verse number three. It says, know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are the sheep of his pasture. Notice this. He says, no. The word no is a rich biblical word. It can mean intellectual knowledge or experiential knowledge. It can mean anything from knowing uh, in an intimate way or knowing in a personal way. And the, and the writer uses this word in the latter sense to say you worship God properly because you know him. Yeah, you know the Lord. And the more you know about God, the more full your worship will be. And the more you know about God, the more natural your worship will be. And beloved, I was on a social media that post this past week, and I came across a short clip of a person by the name of Maya Angelou. We all know Maya Angelou. She was a first-rate poet for many years who could put words in a phenomenal expression. This particular clip was dated perhaps 20 years ago. And there was a young lady in the audience, approximately in her early 20s. Maya Angelou was on stage, and the young lady had a question for the prolific poet. She said, Maya, what do you think about these certain relationships? And Maya Angelou heard the young lady as she addressed her, and she responded this way. She said, first of all, I am Miss Angelou. I am not Maya. I am 62 years old, and I've lived so long and worked so hard that a young lady like you or any other person has no license to come up and call me by my first name. She says, because at the same time, I am your mother. I am your auntie. I am your professor. I am your mentor. In other words, she was saying, girl, put a handle on it before you call me anything. And some of you grew up in houses where you couldn't get away without putting a mister or a missus on the front end of it because you wouldn't leave, live to see the past of, of, of the, the back end of it. Your life would flash before your eyes because you knew you had to put some respect on that name. The psalmist says if you want to continue worshiping God properly, you've got to know who he is. He's not just one of the boys. He's not just someone upstairs, but God is the provider. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the healer and creator. God is the supplier and sustainer. He is the shepherd, the prince of peace, and the bread of life. He is the living water. God is the savior and counselor in all these things. And the way to come to God properly is by knowing who he is. The text says, you got to know that the Lord is God. And understand that in their day, the question was not, is there a God? But the question was, who is God? At that time, many were busy worshiping so many uh, false gods, rain icons, fertility icons, and harvest icons. But the psalmist came to tell, tell us 
that we want you to know who the real God is, the true Lord God, and everybody else must bow down to God Almighty because your relationship with God is more important than what you have from God. It's not about what God gives you. It's about the relationship God has with you. Yeah, and I believe someone throughout the digital dimension in the cyber sanctuary is looking for something from God, but you're trusting and tracing the heart of God. You're trying to look for the heart of God and not the hand of God. And God is saying, if you worship me with your heart, I'll freely give from my hand. Uh, he says that you have to know who the Lord is. But the psalmist says, you have to know who he is because he has made us. And these four words contain three biblical ideas. And I wish I had time to preach it like I feel it. But firstly, is the ideal of election that ancient Israel did not pick themselves. God picked them. As a matter of fact, God chose them for himself. Further, it carries the ideal of deliverance, that God will deliver you. When you are in captivity, when you need liberation, God will step in when you need it most. And thirdly, he has made us implies the covenant that God has on you, that the promise that God has over your life, that God fulfilled the promise through Abraham by blessing the world through him and his seed, Christ Jesus. God made us and not we ourselves. Beloved, when you go through week after week, especially through this pandemic, and through the strain that it causes our families, you ought to just shout, God made us. Because the reason why you made it through even this far is because God has made you. The reason why you worship, the reason why we praise is because God made us and not we ourselves. Huh. How, how did you wake up this morning? How did you get here? God made us. Uh, how did you recover from that depression? How did you make it through that loss? God made us. How did you defeat that addiction? How did you heal from that breakup? God made us. How was your faith still strong through COVID-19? How did God pay your bills? It was because God made us. <laughs> How did you raise those kids? How did you make it through that season of betrayal? God made us. How did you make it this far along the way? God made us. How did you become so successful with the hand of God so evident upon your life? God made us. How did you get this joy in life that will never fade away? God made us. And all along, God has been your strength. And the reason why you worship God is because every single time that you look around at your life, all you can just say is God made us. When you look around, when you get in work, you got to say God made us. When you're on the way to the grocery store trying to get some groceries for your family, you ought to say God made us. See, we get ourselves in trouble when we feel as if we made ourselves, but we got to understand, like the psalmist said, that God made us. And that's why you worship God, because nobody else knows, but you know when you're at your lowest point. When you were in the season when you felt that you couldn't get through it and that you didn't have the stamina to make it through this race, God said, I'm making you. As a matter of fact, I'm making the way available for you before you even get there. You know the failures that you've had. You know the difficulties that you have had to face. And you know that if it had not been for the grace of God on your life, you ought to just say when you are in your private locations in your house, you ought to just say God made us. You ought to say when no one's around, God made us. You ought to say when everybody's around, God made us. The psalmist said we are his, his people, the sheep of his pasture. This is indicative of the fact that we all have some sheep in us. And it's saying that we all need a good shepherd. But the good news is this. That you ought to thank God because we have a good shepherd that will pull you back when you fall off course, that will fight the battles that you have, that will protect you because God is the good shepherd. We've got to worship him joyfully. We've got to worship him reverently. But here's the last one, beloved. We've got to worship him thankfully. The psalmist doesn't stop, but he keeps on moving and gets to verse number four. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. It must be noted that the temple had different sections. Uh, the house of God had different gates and courts with various designations for different populations of people. And some women could get into some of them, some Jews and non-Jews could go in, some Gentiles could. But the ultimate place was, you know this, beloved, the Holy of Holies. 
and it was in the innermost gate where there was a couple of outer gates that surrounded it and led to the ultimate place that was generally exclusive. It's as if the psalmist is saying that you can't enter into the gate without the password. Yeah, you've got a password to get in your ATM machine. You've got a password to access your computer. You've got a password to talk to your credit card company. You've got a password when you talk to alarm companies. You've got a password to get in your phone. But there is a password that you need to enter into worship with so that you can truly worship God. You need to get a pen and paper to write this down, beloved. Put it in a secure location and don't forget it. It's two words. Thank you. <laughs> don't forget it. The psalmist says you ought to be thankful when you come to worship him. In other words, your worship has to be wrapped within gratitude. Your worship flows from a grateful heart because when you have a grateful heart, a heart that's full of gratitude and a heart that's full of thanksgiving, you know that it gives honor to God. And not only does it give honor to God, but it matches the character of God. That God in all his perfection, that in God, God's all of his unchangeability and perfectionism and his consistency. You know that you are matching your worship with the faithfulness of God. There's a story of a preacher from Detroit. He said one of these days he was uh, vacationing in Honolulu, Hawaii. Him and his wife were having a wonderful time there. And they were sitting down and enjoying the sights, and he looked over and saw a homeless man. Saw him digging in the trash can looking for some food. And then, just then, uh, the homeless man found an old sandwich, half eaten, and grabbed it out of the trash and put it on the bench where he was. And then the preacher from Detroit saw the homeless man open up the wrapper on that half eaten burger and sandwich. And he saw him do something that he never expected. He bowed his head and thank God for the burger, and began to enjoy that burger as best as he could. And he began to say, listen to me now, he began to say to himself, if a homeless man could thank God for food that he got out of the trash, how much more should you and I begin to thank God for the stuff that he's done in our lives? Oh, beloved, you've got a lot to be thankful for. Even in the midst of this scarce season, we have a lot to be thankful for. When you look around, even at the simple miracles of life, your heart ought to say, hallelujah, thank God for being so generous to me. Your worship ought to be wrapped in thanksgiving because you know that the Lord is good. Lastly, the psalmist concludes by saying, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him for the Lord is good. Yes, you've you've heard that before, beloved. The Lord is good. And I want to encourage somebody as I take my seat that even in times where it doesn't look like it's good. It's working out for your good. And even though it may seem very bleak, God makes even the most bleak circumstances turn out for our good. So even when you lose, you're winning. Oh, you're not hearing me this morning. It'll help your worship to get on the right place. It'll help your mind to stay on the right thing when you know that the Lord is good. And I believe that this is a word for you right now, a rich, real, real and relevant word for your life. And I wish I could tell you I had some rough days. I wish I could tell you I had some good days in my life. I've had some good days and I've had some rough days. But I can declare, like even the psalmist says, that I can't complain because the Lord has been good. And I believe somebody in here, that's your testimony, that you can say, I've had some rough days. I've had some good days. But God is still good. Even on a rough day when people talk about you and your plans didn't work out or happen in the time you thought they were going to happen, God is still good. The scripture says he will keep you in perfect peace, those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. That's Isaiah 26 and verse number three. Check that out. He will keep your mind in perfect peace when you have your focus, your mind steadfastly upon him. That's the only way we're going to make it through this season. That's the only way we're going to make it through together. By focusing on the author and the finisher of our faith. Beloved, be encouraged today. 
that if you're not a child of God, you can become a child of God. You can enter into covenant relationship and in the promises of God by giving your life to him. Peter even said, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Peter is not only just concerned about this life, he's concerned about the afterlife. And beloved, if you worship in God and you feel as if something is missing, perhaps something with your relationship is missing. I want to encourage you that if you have a prayer request, send it in to our church. Send it in uh, so that we can pray for you and with you, that God give you the grace you need to deal with the issues that you face in your life. If you're not a child of God, I want you to know that when you worship God, you have to understand, you have to know him. And so if you're far away from God, if you've grown up at church but never really were consistent in your relationship with God, I want to encourage you to give your life to him and know him because once you know him, your mind will be kept because how many of you know that God is a keeper, a keeper of minds? When everything is looking so chaotic and everything is looking so unpeaceful and unrestful, God will sustain you once you know him, learn of him, for he is closer to you than you even think, even at this time. God bless you all today and forevermore. You know I'm glad I know you. Glad I know you. Oh, oh, oh I'm glad you know me. Glad you know me. Yeah, yeah, we pray. Good morning, church. It's time to give back what the Lord has blessed us. It's another portion of our service is giving. And the Lord has given us a lot in our lives that we are thankful for. I want to read from Matthew 6, 3 through 4. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And we want to just thank the church members for continuing to give. We know this is a time that we're all under pressure, but the thing, the church is still surviving and we need to pay our bills and get church ready for the time we'll be able to come back from this virus. There are three ways that we can give. Online through our website, you can go to chathamavalon.com and see that we have a website where you give on. 
Also, you can drop it by on Saturday mornings from 9 until 4 o'clock each Saturday. There's someone to be here to collect your uh, offering and also give you your communion that you may take away with you. Also, you can send it by mail to 8601 South State Street in Chicago, Illinois, 60619. And I want to thank you and have a good day. God bless. Thank you. time for communion. I will be reading from the book of St. John uh, chapter 6 verses 51 through 58 for your hearing. And the book reads, I am the, the, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can a man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth the flesh and drinketh the blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live with the Father, so he that eateth me even shall live in by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your father did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Let us partake in communion. Let us give thanks for his broken body and shed blood. Our Father God, again, we thank, come thank you, the Lord. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to partake in your broken body and, sh and your shed blood. Hope and pray that we do these things which are decent in the manner, with a clean hand and a pure heart. As in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Jehovah, God, and our Father, we're so thankful in you, dear Lord, for all of your grace, your love, your mercy toward your earthly creatures. And Father, when we take inventory of our lives, we acknowledge we're not worthy because we don't always obey you as we should. We don't obey you as well as we could. But you still continue to provide all of our needs. Lord, we want to thank you for this local facility here. We call Chatham Avalon Church of Christ. We also want to thank you for our minister, Dr. Daniel Harrison and his family. Father, bless them and help them to be able to motivate us who are under their leadership and help us not to ever go weary in well-doing, because we know 
we will not succeed if we get tired and we give up and give out or give in. Lord, bless our leadership here, our elders, our deacons, our teachers, our trustees, and any others who've been authorized to render a service. Father, we pray that they will not get the big head and think they are chosen because they have all the answers or they have all the wisdom or all the knowledge. But pray that they have a humble and meek spirit and strive to honor, obey, and glorify you and your son while we are here on this earth. Father, bless the sick everywhere. Comfort those that are suffering grief and bereavement at a difficult time. Lord, just have mercy on all of us and help us to work together in love and peace and harmony, and that we may ever endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Thank you. Forgive us, heal us, and save us. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Let's praise him today. Let's praise him. Yes, it's just something about Sunday morning. Well, said I can't on, wait. I can't oh, wait. Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Sunday morning. To sing and shout. To sing and shout. And praise the Lord. Praise well, the Lord. Well, it's good to lie. Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Gather together. Gotta be the law of I know you get a little worried about your bills sometimes. But right. Jesus said he'll make a way out of no way. Wow, I don't worry about my bills. Sunday morning, no bill collectors knocking at my door. Oh, if they come on Sunday morning. Sunday morning, cause everything's gonna be alright. I don't worry about my bills getting paid, cause I know that the Lord has already made up. Hey, there's something about that day, that it's gonna be the Lord. One more thing I want to tell you Y'all ain't going to believe this now Listen, some folks don't go to church On Sunday morning Some stay at home Some even go fishing Oh, but they don't know On Sunday morning They just don't know Just what they're missing Not Friday, not 
Saturday. Yeah.